All right, guys. So we talked about, I think, you know, I'm taking a break from the EC2 right now. We still have uh, some uh, important topics to be discussed in uh, EC2. Uh, we, we pretty much covered all these things, instances, spot instances, reserved instances. We talked about scheduled instances, dedicated instances, AMIs, uh, volumes, snapshots. What I want to talk uh, right now today is, you know, we, we will talk about security groups. Um, I will talk about security groups now. And then I will uh, probably, uh, key pairs we talked about it, network interfaces we talked. Uh, load balancers and auto scaling are two important topics that I wanted to talk, load balancers and auto scaling. Um, this is a new system manager's new feature. I don't know whether I'll be talking this in the class. This is something that they just added uh, like a couple of weeks, I would say, uh, back. Uh, but I'm trying to understand that. If I can, then I'll give you some ideas about it. I have not used it in uh, my uh, environment. But we will be talking about load balancing and auto scaling at a later point because it is too early to learn that because without understanding network, uh, you don't understand that. Uh, security groups uh, is what I want to talk first. And then we're going to get on to VPC which I would say is the most important or uh, from my perspective, uh, the most interesting and the most um, important topic in this whole course is probably say uh, VPC, virtual private cloud. How do you design that cloud? How do you design that network? Understanding that is a uh, very key because that is how you are going to protect your servers and instances and resources inside the Amazon cloud. Uh, right now, when we launch an instance, you go and pick a VPC, you pick a subnet, uh, but you are doing it without really knowing what exactly that is. You are without uh, knowing how it is connecting to the outside world. Why can't I sometimes connect to my server? There are a lot of things. Uh, we will uh, start uh, VPC of Pulit today, and then we will continue that. Uh, my goal is to finish off this uh, VPC uh, in the next two days uh, today and. Hopefully by tomorrow we'll be able to finish it. So before doing that, let me get on to security groups. So what is, see anything you click, there is a help button here. That itself is a knowledge base article. Uh, you know, there is a lot of things about Amazon's security group. What is actually a security group? I mean, we've been talking about it for some time. So what is is security group? It's a kind of firewall. Okay, so I've been telling from the day one, you know, security group is uh, a firewall, uh, software firewall. So it is, here it is, a security group act as a firewall that controls the traffic for one or more instances. So um, if you have an instance, you can protect that instance with a firewall. So let me draw this picture here. Uh, so you have an in Amazon VPC or in Amazon network, you have an instance. Let's say this is your instance. Okay. So let's say this name of this instance is A. It's a Windows server. So you want to connect to this instance and you want to this instance to go to internet and access certain things or maybe it, this instance wants to talk to another instance. So let's say this is another instance. Okay, and let us assume that these two instances are in a, in a network or in a subnet or in a VLAN. So this A wants to talk to B and B wants to talk to A. That is one scenario. Sometimes A wants to talk to, you know, this is uh, something called as IGW. I'm just introducing some new terms here. Don't worry about it. IGW stands for Internet Gateway. That is actually a router that allows uh, your instances in your VPC to talk to Internet. So this is a uh, uh, Internet. Okay. So this is Internet. So security group is something that you attach to an instance. It is a firewall 
that you can attach to an instance. So, you know, uh, it is basically something like this. You know, this is for incoming traffic. I, I would say this is for incoming traffic and this is outgoing traffic. So there is a security group here also. So it is one security group. You can have multiple security groups attached to one instance. We will see all that options uh, now. Uh, it is cumulative. So here a security group is something that you put. So here you can tell in the security group inbound. There is something called as inbound rules. Inbound rules and outbound rules. Outbound rules. So in incoming traffic and outcoming outgoing traffic you can control using security groups. So security groups are kind of a firewall. So here, uh, when you put a security group, I'm going to say, okay, in this is an instance, you know, and you know that we wanted to RDP to that instance. If you want to RDP to that instance means from internet, you are trying to connect to that instance. So what is the port number that needs to be opened here? 3389, right? 3389 is the uh, RDP port. So you need to open that port in this. You want to ping this server, so you need to open the ICMP port. Let's say if this server wants to talk to uh, internet, you want to browse Google or you want to browse Yahoo or you want to go to a, a patch management site or an antivirus site, this server wants to go. So that means you need to open port number 80 and port number 443 maybe to go outside, that is outbound traffic. If this is a, a application server and this is a database server, just imagine this is an Oracle or a SQL server database server. And uh, SQL server database is running on port number 1443. This is the default of uh, SQL server port number. So if this server wants to talk to uh, this SQL server, there will be a fire a security group on this server. You cannot build a server without a security group. In Amazon, you cannot build a server without a security group. So every server will have a security group. So if you if a server A wants to talk to server B, what should be the port that should be open here? It should be an inbound rule or an outbound rule. Can anybody tell me? This server wants to talk to this server at port number 1443. Outbound? Is inbound. So this should be an inbound rule. So in inbound rule, you should say, okay, allow 1443. Now, you can also say, allow 1443 from where? You want to have it from internet? Then you should say 0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash 0. 0.0.0.0 means from anywhere in the world, you can connect to that server. Or I can specifically say, if this server's IP address is, let's say, 10.10.10.7, I can specifically say, okay, only 10.10.10.7 can talk to this server. If you want to explicitly say a server, you should use something called a slash 32. That is the subnet mask you need to use. If you want a particular IP, you can specify. If you specify this here, like you know only 10.10.10.7 10 slash 32 is the only server that means that is the only server that can talk to me and that is how you need to do it you know security in Amazon is very very important so you need to uh, make sure that uh, you understand uh, security very well so it is very very important to understand that so this is how you do it. So you can specifically say, okay, hey, I want to do that. So what I wanted to tell you from here is security groups are something that you put across an instance. Every instance get a security group. And then you can permission who can access what and what that server can access. Now, there are some more advanced topics to it. We will, we will look into that in a minute. For now, you just understand this is what a security group is okay can you even specify a range like 7 to 40 or 4200 what is that uh, can we specify even a range like a range from a 10.10.10.7 no, to no 
that is not no, that is unfortunately that is not possible in security groups okay thank you uh, hi Deepu. is like 32 the default value for all the um, you if know, you want to specify servers? an individual server you have to use 32 yes slash 32 oh, okay. Okay. If you want to specify an individual server, uh, slash 32 is the role. I will show you certain uh, network properties when we get on to that, you know, subnetting. That is actually where subnetting comes into picture. All right. So let's go back to that uh, document. So here it is. When you launch an instance, that means when you create an instance, you associate one or more security groups. So you can have one or multiple security groups attached to an instance. Then you add rules to each security group that allow traffic to or from. That means inbound and outbound associated with that instance. Are you following me? So every line, so when you read technical documents, you know, you got to be careful, you know, don't read it like a novel or anything, you will not understand. Actually speaking, this much thing that I selected has so much information there. If you look at it, every word is very, very important in that selected part. Every word is important. If a word is changed, the whole meaning will go. So let's read this one more time. A security group act as a virtual firewall that controls so it will act as a firewall which will control the traffic from one or more instances it is the one that controls the traffic from one or more instances when you launch an instance that means whenever you create an instance you associate one or more security groups it's not one security group you can have multiple security groups attached to that instance then you add rules to each security group. Then you can have create rules to each of those security groups. And that security group, the rules will tell you whether you can allow traffic to that server or from that server. To or from that associated instance. Then you can modify that and things like that. Okay. So EC2 Classic, you know, you don't need to worry about EC2 Classic is the Amazon's old way of doing, you know, VPC, VPC is the new, new normal. VPC has been there for the past uh, four years or something. Prior to that, Amazon never had a VPC. Everything was in something called as a EC2 Classic. You can just build a server in Amazon EC2. So, and then, you know, it will called as a classic instance. Now, nobody, now, anybody wants to build an instance, whether it is a small company or a big company or an individual, you have to create that in a VPC. So, uh, it's classic is no more valid. I would say it's absolute. So, you create uh, always your instances in VPC and then you permission it. So, let's just look at security group rules, certain rules. Uh, these are things that can probably ask for your certifications, okay? So that is why I would say you may want to read these things. The rule of a security group controls the inbound traffic that allow to each instance that are associated with the security group. So let's see that. So these are certain general rules and we're going to see that, okay? By default, security groups allows all outbound traffic. That means outbound traffic is all all that means nothing is blocked if a server wants to talk to outside nothing is blocked but if you want you can block it if you want a particular server to only go outside on port 80 then you can block that but by default it is open to the public it is everything is open for outbound traffic that means from that server it can go anywhere but the issue is not from that server. You know, it is your server. You From your server, you can go to anywhere. The concern is who can connect to your server is the problem or is the concern. You know, if somebody can connect to that server, then they can hack it. So that is the important thing. Inbound is what you need to be very careful about. Normally, outbound traffic, you can keep it open. Default is okay. Uh, the second one is for EC2 Classic. We don't need to do that. So security groups are always permissive. You can't create rules that deny access. So that means, you know, it is not a real, uh, 
you know, security device like checkpoint or anything. In checkpoint appliance or um, other other uh, Palo Alto uh, firewalls, you can deny access to certain servers and things like that. In Amazon EC2, uh, so security groups, you cannot deny access. There is no rule you can say, okay, deny access from this server. No, you cannot do that. You cannot say that, oh, okay, everybody can connect to the server except that server. No, you cannot do that, okay? Here you can only say only who can connect. That's it. If you explicitly tell somebody, okay, you can connect, then they can all connect. All right. So, uh, and uh, basically you can see for each rule, you can specify different protocols. You know, you can do uh, uh, all these protocols. We're going to see all that things, you know. Uh, so here it is, you know, so Yogendra, you were asking an, an individual IP address. If you want a particular server to connect, you must use the slash 32 prefix. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here somebody asked me a range of IP version for insider block notation, for example, slash 24. Okay. So, uh, so here is the thing, you know, somebody asked me, can I put a range? And I said, you know, you cannot do a range. Uh, but here is the thing, you can do a range in, in this format. Can anybody tell me what is that format means? Slash 24. I mean, who asked, who asked me that question? Who asked me that question? I have it. Yeah. I have so Sham was asking me, I believe Sham, what I understand from you is this. This is what Sham actually asked. I, this is my understanding. So I have an instance and Sham is saying, hey, you know what, uh, can I allow traffic from 172.85.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
with the security group as a name called RDP dash security group. If you click on that thing, you can see that the inbound rules, you can see that 3389 is allowed from 0.0.0 .0 slash 0. That means anybody can RDP to that server from anywhere in the world. You can also ping that server from anywhere in the world. Things like that. So we're going to take that server, server 3, as an example for our security group lessons now. So you can go here and create security group. And you can see that there are so many security groups are there. Now security groups are not limited in an availability zone. Security group has a global reach within a VPC, not in a region. In a region, you can create multiple VPCs. But security groups are visible or available within a VPC. Now, you don't know what a VPC is, but understand that uh, security group is available within a VPC. Now, when I say within a VPC, there is also one thing you need to understand. You cannot span or expand a VPC between regions. A VPC can only be in one region. You cannot have a VPC between two regions. It's not possible. So just for now, you understand a security group is only available in that, that particular region. In fact, it is only available within that VPC. Now, you don't know what is VPC. It is a network. In that network only it is available. But it is not limited to any availability zones. A VPC can span mid between multiple uh, availability zones. So this is how it is. I'm just going to draw Amazon's uh, region here. Let's say this is the region. And uh, this is the different availability zones. In this availability zone, I can create a VPC within this availability zone. That means this VPC, can you tell me, let's say this is A, B, C, and D. Can you tell me which this VPC is spanning across three availability zones? It's not in this availability zone. So if you have a security group, you, the security group can only be live within this VPC. We will understand what VPC is when we learn it. So you can use that in this availability zone, in this availability zone, or in this availability zone. But only within that VPC. I can have multiple VPC. I can have a VPC like this here, another VPC. That VPC will have its own set of security groups that can be used in these two availability zones in that VPC. Can you use these red check marks? Let's say these red check marks are security group. Can you use them in this VPC? You cannot. So a security group is only limited within a VPC. Just understand that. Okay. And we will learn that more. But just for now, you understand that a security group is only limited within a VPC, but it can be in any availability zones. We will come back and learn more. I'm just giving some just rough ideas. So let's go and create a security group right now. So you're creating a security group. I would say give some meaningful name for your security groups. So I'm going to create a security group for something called as external dash web servers dash security group. SG is security group, okay? External dash web dash security, web servers dash security. That means I'm creating a firewall rule for my external web servers. Now we will be getting on to some real life scenarios. You know, all these days I was talking you how to create server and all, but that is not the thing from going forward. We are, so actually I said, you know, I think I did mention to you in the class. My goal here is the end. This is actually my goal. Okay. I, I wanted to tell you end of the class by finishing of the class. 
each one of you should be able to design an environment like this from top to bottom you will have uh, multiple servers you will have a vpc you know how to create application servers you know how to create their uh, networks you can have external facing web servers see these are web servers where the outside world can connect but you will have application servers where outside people cannot talk there will be load balances between there will be databases in the back end there will be s3 storage for storing your stuff there will be uh, route 53 for doing the uh, dns and things like that so if you can build something like this from top to bottom that, and i will be happy that is what I, my goal here is you know that will touch every components that we are learning right now you have learned only how to create ec2 instances when you create an ec2 instances you understand there is private ip public ip you understand there is something called as imaging you can take snapshots you understand there is something called as ebs volumes all that things are just pretend to ec2 but there is a lot of things we're going to learn and that is what we're going to learn now we're going to learn every features and capability so the goal here is to build an environment like this and based on that is what i am going to do now so we are going to create a companies just imagine that you know we we all have uh, doing a project to create um, a network a small company let's say you know a new york based hedge fund company they have some application servers they have some web servers they have some databases now they wanted to move all their servers and their new applications they wanted to put it in amazon how can you go and confidently securely deploy that or migrate that help them move all that environment to amazon and say okay you guys are good this is how you need to manage it. that is what we are going to do okay so we're going to give a name for this uh, security group so here it is and there is certain characters and all you cannot use you can read that enter a name up to 250 55 characters long a to z or small letters or capital letters or numbers spaces and all is possible the name can't be editor after the security group so once you create a security group you cannot change the name of that okay so decide what you want and then give a description for it I think I will put external facing servers. Okay. Now, when you create a security group, I just a few minutes back, I told you where is security groups live? Within a VPC? Under a VPC. VPC. So now you don't know VPC, don't worry about it. And that is what we're going to be learning later. So it has to be in a vpc a security group is associated with a vpc so if you are in a particular vpc you can only see the security groups belongs to that vpc so you can pick one of your vpc so i'm going to pick this class 9 vpc because we haven't created a class 10 vpc which we will be doing today or maybe tomorrow so i'm selecting right now class 9 vpc so this security group is going to be created inside the class 9 vpc so give the detailed description good name so that you know what it is now this is where the inbound and outbound rule and the uh, and the rule of thumb actually says uh, you know uh, what was the thing outbound rules by default outbound traffic is allowed to all correct see here all traffic all protocol from port ports from 0 to 65000 ports it is allowing 0.0.0, .0. that means um, outbound that means wherever this it is not attached to any servers now this security group does not block anything for outgoing anything in the out outgoing is open but look at inbound traffic nothing is there so this is an external web server okay so that is a web server we're going to put it in our you know vpc i'm just going to draw a picture here okay so let's say this is your uh, uh, amazon environment and as I said, this is something called as the IGW, the Internet Gateway, which is attached to Internet. And, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, Parik is sitting in his house here and he's going to access this web server. Which web server? This particular web server. This is a web server. 
he wants to access this web server which has a site called uh, you know xyc.com xyc.com is running on this server parik is sitting in his house okay. he wants to access that server so he is going to access that xyc what is the port number he wants to access what will be the port number this website will be running it can be on 443 or 40 let us say it is a normal website it is running on port 80 if it is running on port 80 what should be the security groups inbound rule here what port should be open port 80. port 80 so here port 80 needs to be opened now not only parik there are hundreds of thousands of people from different part of the world wanted to access that xyc.com in that case you should probably allow everybody to access right 0, .0, .0, 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 if i want only parik to access then i should get parik's ip address then i can say okay parik's ip address you know 85.72.65. thing/32 can access i can so do that also so what i'll do is i'll create a security group and that is what i'm creating this is an external facing web server I wanted to allow inbound traffic to port 80 and I'm going to do that now okay so let's see what is going to do so I'll create add rule and I'm coming here in the custom TCP you can do all traffic just like that if I do all traffic and say you know uh, anywhere perfect no issues anyone in the world can connect to that server anyone uh, the server can connect to anywhere in the world both sides all all if you're really troubleshooting a problem you can probably do this but i will strongly say definitely don't do this kind of thing if you do something like this anyone in the world can connect to that server using any protocol whether it is rdp or ping or telnet or scp whatever you know whatever is possible they can connect to that server so do you do this no this is this what we want to do no we wanted to do is we wanted to allow only http traffic so here you can see http traffic you will see here http and https so i wanted to allow only http traffic tcp it's a tcp protocol and you remember the osi layer and all it is a tcp ip application layer protocol 80 and i'm going to say anywhere in the world because it's an external facing web server i want everybody to connect to this server that's it now you want to test it you don't want to allow ping and all to your external facing web server then uh, you know many many hackers and all they try to ping and they know that okay there is a server responding let me let me go and attack that server so don't do ping and all but if you want to verify it you can do that so I'm going to run uh, I wanted to also do HTTPS because I'm going to run some um, secure website also into that so I'm going to put that also so these are the two port numbers outbound is fine why I am doing outbound is you know I can restrict outbound also normally in certain cases you can only allow certain things we'll come to that in a later point but right now let us let us not focus on outbound it's not very important because from the server that is your server from that server where you want to go it is your choice the concern is who can connect to that server is the point so you put that and you create a security group perfect your security group is created it is somewhere here you can see the name of it you know you will see your external uh i don't think that's the name we created is this the one we created yeah it's a beta i'm not sure let me see no that's not the one no that's not the one take it maybe the other one yeah this one yeah. yeah yeah i think this is the one that we created right the security group right it's, it's the first one yeah security group for external so you know see the thing that is where you know you want to take this name uh -huh. you know i would i would probably take that name and i will edit this here so we know it is so you just tag it that is actually tagging so you can see that now that i tagged it you can see here in the tagging name is external web server so you should tag it now let me show you something here i want to go to 
VPC. Okay, just to show you VPC. Uh, Deepa, I've got a quick question. I know that we have opened the ports to connect to uh, for the outside uh, people to connect to our web server. But what is the IP address they would be using when entering the HTTP? I, mean, so I allowed every traffic. 0.0.0, .0 means anybody can connect. I'm not specifying any particular IP address. I'm opening that server to the entire world. 0.0.0.0, .0 means entire world. That is what it is. Okay, but what will my, I mean, my, my web server wanted to have it, I mean, won't that have its own IP address? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we haven't get in. We just created a firewall rule. I haven't put that into anywhere. I just created a firewall rule. That's it. I didn't put it onto any server. We, we will see that. Give me one second, okay? Okay, okay. Thanks. Yeah, so we go to VPC. I'm just showing you VPC here. We will be coming here. So there are five VPCs in my environment. And you can see that I have... Uh, 25 security groups here. I have so many things here in this network, so many things. We need to actually clean that up, actually. Uh, but, and you can see the security groups here also. In this VPC thing also, you can see the security groups. So if you click on security groups, you can see all that 25 security groups. And you can see that which VPC they belong to. You see here, each one. This is from a test VPC. This is from class 9 VPC. This is from class 8 VPC. Uh, the different different VPCs, but there is an option here in the VPC. You can filter them by a particular thing. So I'm going to select class 9 VPC here. Now you can see only the VPCs that belongs to class 9. And we created our VPC in which VPC? Uh, we created our security group in which VPC? Class 9. In class 9. So that is why it is here. You can see that VPC. Okay, so now look at certain things. The summary tab will show you what is the name. Every VPC has a, uh, sorry, every security group has a ID. It's called SG dash an ID number. Everything in every object or anything you create in Amazon has an ID. And this is a security group ID. The description is there. It will show you what VPC. VPC also has an ID. Instance has an ID. Volume has an ID. Subnet has an ID. Anything in Amazon has an ID. And that is how Amazon really understand your stuff. So keep, pay attention to that. And I know it is very difficult for us to remember this. That is why you give a meaningful name to your VPCs. You know, you give meaningful name to your security groups. You give meaningful name for your instance. You give meaningful name for your volume. So tagging is what that makes it. So. I mean, Amazon does not know, or if you call Amazon support, you just tell external web server, they don't, they will ask you, hey, what is the security group ID? Hey, what is the VPC ID? You tell, oh, my class 9 VPC is having problem, they don't know. You got to tell this VPC ID what it is. So here is the thing, inbound rule, 80 and 443, you are allowing port and range is port 80 and source is this. Now, I wanted to, just for you to test it, everybody to test it, I'm going to add, I am going to add another rule. You can edit it. You can edit the inbound rule. I'm going to create a rule called uh, ICMP, that is for pinging. I'm going to put uh, ICMP, where is ICMP? There it is. I'm going to say ICMP. I'm going to say I can specify any security group and all. That is not the thing. I'm going to say 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash 0 is allowed for ICMP. And I'm going to also create another rule called RDP. I wanted to RDP to this server. I'm going to RDP to this server. Hold on one second. I bet I'm on the class. I'll call you back. Okay, bye. Um, I'm going to select RDP. Now here, I am going to specify my IP address. Okay, my personal IP address. If you go to Google and type, what is my 
IP address. You know, you can all do that. If you want to know your thing, it will tell you what is your IP. This is actually my IP address, 100.34.192. I'm going to put that IP address here. And I'm going to specify, if I want to exclusively say that is the only IP address that can do RDP, I'm going to say 32. I can do that. So now, can anybody tell me, look at this security group. Okay, I'm going to save it for now. If you look at this, can anybody tell me who all can, I'm going to ask some questions. Okay, I need uh, you guys to answer in the chat window if you possible. I'm going to ask you, who all can ping this server? If you know this, there is no server at this point. If I put this security, I told you we have to put the security group to a server, correct? To protect that server. So we just created a security group. We haven't put this security group into any server so far. But if I put this security group to a particular server, who all can ping this server? Everyone can ping. Everyone. Okay, if this server, if the server I am going to put this is running a website called yahoo.com on port 80, can anybody access? Everyone can access it. Yes. So who yes. can RDP to that server? You can only, only you can. the only IP address. Only only that IP address. address. Whoever is having that IP address, yeah. he is the only one who can RDP to that server. Correct. Okay. Can uh, one person, um, Sham, can you give me your IP address? Can you go to your internet and give me your IP address? You can. You don't have to. I mean, you can type it here in the chat window. Or anybody else, somebody can give me your IP address, that's fine. No no hacking or anything, nobody is going to hack you, don't worry about it. Okay, so Yogendra gave me an IP address. Okay, so I wanted Yogendra also to RDP to that server. So this is the thing, you cannot specify any range. Enough, enough, I, I, I got a couple of them, I just want to put only one. I'm going to put Yogendra's uh, IP address for now. I want Yogendra also to RDP to that server. So what I'll do is I'll edit, add rule. I'll come another RDP rule. I need to specify another RDP now. And this time I'm going to put his IP address, which is 24.211.197.188 slash zero, sorry, slash 32. I'm doing that and save it. So now, Yogendra's IP address, this is this one, and my IP address can RDP and others cannot do. So we created a rule, okay? So this is what a security group is. This is all about it. So we created a security group. You can control the traffic. Um, you cannot uh, do without 32. If you don't, if you don't, if you, you cannot, uh, you know, if you say this without a 32, like this, you cannot save it. It will give you an error message. So you have to put said or you can say, uh, you know, slash 24, I think. You cannot even do 24 here, I think. 24 also don't know. If, you, if I put like this, 0 dash 24. Now, now tell me what happens. Now, what, what is this means? The IP address 24.211.197.0224 can access, can RDP your server. So that means where is Yogendra? Where are you located? Charlotte, right? Yeah, Raleigh. Raleigh. So probably 200 people in Raleigh can access. I don't know who they are. Anybody who is having that IP address from 24.211.197.123 up to 254 can access if I do that. If I do a slash zero, uh, no, you cannot do slash zero. So 24 means like that. So if you want exclusively, then you need to do a slash zero, 32. Okay, if you want an explicit thing, slash 32 is needed. If you put a 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0, then it is everybody. Okay, whole network. All right, so now we have this rule. And now what I'm going to do is, so we have, we are going back to our instances. And I'm going to, I'm going to pick this uh, particular server, ser or server 003. Server 003 already has a, security group I'm going to call this a server 003 as external web server 
zero zero one okay or zero one i'm just naming it and then this server also i wanted to name it we will be using this for our future classes so i'm just changing that name also external web server 02 so we have two web servers we, we can we ha they are not web servers we have to install iis on it we have to configure website and things like that that all we will learn later when we learn uh, load balancers right now i am not going to get into that topic we will see that but i have this particular server web server 1 and i wanted uh, this web server 1 so which VPC is this? You know, if we created a security group in a, in a VPC, if this server is not in that VPC, can I apply that security group to this server? No. No. So it has to be, in, I think this is, a, this is definitely VPC 9, okay? So what I'm going to do is I want to remove this security group and I wanted to attach the new web security group. So right click here, go to networking and you can see change security groups. So you can come and uncheck that security group and we want to put our security group. What is our security group name? This is the one, right? Yeah. Assign security group. So I just attached it. You can see that now there is only one attachment. And I'm going to see the inbound rules. So it will show you all our rules here, see? 3389 can be done by these two guys, 80 can be done by these guys, TCP can be done by these guys and things like that. Uh, one question I have. Okay. Uh, let's say you have two different security groups. Mm. In one you allow traffic and you, another one you block traffic. No, I told what you, you cannot, first of all, you cannot block. So that is why I said it's cumulative. So if you have another security group, we will we will do that in a minute. Okay, I understand your question. We will do that and that is very important. What okay. happens if you have two security groups? But you never can block any security group. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll see that. Mm -hmm. But right now, you mean by this security group is attached to this server and inbound and outbound rules are there everybody know what it is outbound is complete so i'm going to start this server now okay let's see what happens i mean i know you cannot do test but you all can do one thing you can all ping that server correct so this server will get a public ip address now that's it power on Now, why is it getting a public address? Why is it accessible to internet and all? There is a lot of things you need to learn for that and we will be learning that when we learn VPC. Uh, but let us focus on security group today. Okay, now you can see that it got a public IP address. So you guys can all start pinging now and see whether you are able to ping. Okay, it is not up. Let's not do anything until you see that two out of two check. Don't do it. It is not up. If you actually go to the uh, instance setting and go to the instance screenshot, you can see that the server is just booting. Okay, it is already up. So now you should be probably able to uh, ping it. Can you ping that IP address? 54, this IP address. Not yet. Ping 54 dot 89 dot 102 dot 212 dash t okay, let's just wait for a few minutes is there a firewall on windows server that we have to disable the last time we did by default you know amazon instances the firewalls are disabled so that should not create any problems uh, but if the firewall inside your windows is uh, on then it's a different story in that case it's a Linux server you can have firewalls Windows server can have its own firewall if that firewall is blocking then you cannot do definitely you cannot do it uh, this is all we are doing with the assumption that the firewalls you know in in most of the companies nobody uses Windows firewall okay you know that right everybody uses their external the company's web uh, firewalls or in Amazon, we will be using security groups. You don't want to do individual servers having their own firewall. That's not good. 
Uh, and if you deploy an instance from Amazon, the firewalls are by default are uh, not on. They are off. Okay, so let's wait. So what is happening now is the server is up. You can see that the screen, but you know it is running some you know uh, boot scripts and stuff like that. It is verifying certain things. It takes a little time for it to come up. Okay, that is why you know you can see that it is still initializing. So there is a, a checks and lot of checks and all Amazon do internally. They have some software within that uh, thing. In fact, I couldn't check that other thing that we said. Okay, tomorrow I will test that. You know, uh, as some agent I mentioned about yesterday, right? I will talk about that later. I'll, I'll remember that and I'll give you an answer for that. But let's just wait. It is still not up. Yeah, it is getting request timeout for everybody right now. Even for me, it is request timeout. It is not pinging. Uh, it has to come up because you can see that the server is still initializing here. It is not up. The operating system is up, but the network is not ready. You know, it, it has to bind the network. It has to get the IP address. A lot of things it needs to do. So as soon as it's ready, we should be able to ping. We should be. We'll see. Aditi, can we add 1015 IPs to the same uh, code yeah, number? Yeah, you can. You can. You can add. Um, you can add. Is there any? Is there any limit? No, I don't limit? know the limit, uh, uh, Ravi. I know. I think you need to probably look into that. There may be some limits, but I don't know the limit that there are. But you can create um, quite a lot. I'm not sure. Uh, I think there is a limits there, but you can also request Amazon to increase the limits. Okay, so now it is saying two out of two check passes, but we still cannot ping that server. Okay. So now we need to see what is it. Am I putting the correct IP address? 54.89.10.212. Okay, so we cannot ping it. Okay. Let me see, I can RDP to that server. There could be multiple reasons, uh, but we'll see that. 54 dot 89 dot one zero two dot two one two. Okay, I can RDP to that server, but I cannot ping to that server. Okay, can you guys, uh, anybody, RDP to that server? But uh, Yogendra, can you try to RDP? Are you getting the username and password? Yeah, I'm using the Mac. I don't have the RDP utility for Mac installed actually. Yes, you are the right person to test it. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. Okay. All right. So let me just... Uh, I wanted to test is there any firewalls blocking it. It's a, it, it is a Windows 2016 so I don't know how it is. So let's go and find out. Control panel. Firewalls. Okay, firewall is on here. So in 2003, the firewall is on. This is a, not a good thing. So, so what do you do when you create your template? What you should do? 
This is the 2016 problem. Okay, in 2016, their uh, firewalls is allowing RDP, but the firewalls are all blocking uh, uh, ping. So I'm going to turn off these firewalls. Okay, but if you want that to happen all the time, you should uh, when you build your uh, AMI, you should have done it. So now you should be able to ping all of you. Are you able to ping now? See now you can ping. Correct? Yeah, I'm able to ping now. Okay. Yes. Okay, so uh, I will uh, uh, make uh, Sham uh, IP address uh, to the firewall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the firewall here. Uh, this is our firewall security group. I'm going to the inbound rule here, and I'm going to edit this, and I'm going to put uh, Sham's IP address here and say 32. Okay, so now Sham, can you RDP to that server now? That's it. I just made that change. Yeah, I can. You can RDP now? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yeah, I can. Okay, can anybody else RDP to that server? No, I tried. I am unable to. But all of you will be able to ping to that server, correct? Yes. Yeah, I'm getting a ping response. <coughs> right. So now, look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to the security group. Now this is our server. I'm going to the security group. I'm going to edit this and I'm going to remove ICMP and I'm going to say save. All right. Now are you able to ping? You can see that the ping will drop now here. Okay. Look at this in a minute. Yeah, it's not working. No, it's not working. It is timing out now. I'm still able to ping that. Why is that? It should time out now, but I, I think it is some, some session or something is there, but it should time out, okay? So you should not be able to ping it now. So only HTTP and HTTP is allowed and things like that. Now, we are in that server. Can I go to Google from that server? Yes. 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 Why? Because the outbound uh, is open. Let's see. Let's see. We can go to Google.com. There's an enhanced security in Windows Server. Uh, I wanted to find out how to disable that. Give me one second here. System. not familiar with the uh, 2016 now uh, but I think it's pretty same so let's see local server there will be something called as okay here it is see yes you can see that IE enhanced security and IE enhanced security will block all these things so what we're going to do is we're going to disable that okay so now you won't get that pop-up blocker or anything on that server good all right, now let's go here and type google.com. It is still, I think I have to close this browser. Hold on. I'm closing the browser. I'll open up the browser one more time and I'll go to google.com. Are you able to browse Google? I can browse Google, correct? Yeah. So now, I'm going to close this browser. Outbound is all. I don't want that. I'm going to edit this. I'm going to say outbound is only allowed to HTTP. Everybody, you know, it can go to anywhere. 
uh, thing outbound is allowing this server can go to HTTP okay so I just changed the outbound traffic I, I didn't save it I think HTTP anywhere and I'm going to save it okay So why is it? It's a, like it already existed. Maybe that is the reason. So delete and create a new one. No, I think there's some wrong. I think we cannot. You can use replace, I think. It seems so that the allow all is within that. Yeah, I think uh, that's the thing. So let's go this and save this. Okay. And then I'll go and edit this. Stick is and I'll save it. Could not update your security group rule. No changes at the specified rule peer 0, 0.0 TCP port 80 to port 80. I think by default is already enabled. No. Can we close it on the and try? Is it due to that? It says you can only give a particular IP address. So that's not correct. Mm. I don't know that's correct, okay? I don't think that is correct. No, it is, uh, okay, it is here. 80 is already there, right? Outbound, that is why. Yeah, it was already there. I think we are doing something mistake here, guys. Sorry. Okay, it is already here. Uh, I think we were doing some mistake. I don't know what I was doing, but you see that it is allowing, okay? So I'm only allowing HTTP now. Everybody agree? Outbound, correct? Outbound, I am only allowing port 80. So now, can I browse Google from here? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's see. Google.com. I cannot. Why is that? Can I browse uh, my trading site? I think like Google uses like HTTPS, I don't know. No. Hold on one second. Hey Rajat, I'll call you back, okay, I'm in the class. All right. Yeah, I'm going to solve in sys.com. That is working, but I cannot go to google.com. I can go to yahoo.com.
but why can't I go to google.com? Anybody? I think Yahoo is going. Let's see. Yahoo should go if my understanding is correct. Or, or let's try bankofamerica.com. I think Google uses HTTP. Let's see bankofamerica.com. Correct. The answer is Google is by default HTTPS. Bankofamerica.com is HTTPS. We are only allowing 80 to go out. Make sense? So that is the thing. That is why you can browse this site or you can browse, you know, probably CNN.com will work because it is port 80. See, CNN is coming up. But you cannot do anything that is HTTPS because we are only allowing port 80 from this server. Okay, it is coming. You know, it, it is it is slow or something, but the site is coming up. You can see that. You know, already it got the CNN thing, and if you wait, it will come up. Okay, is that clear? Uh, so now, any questions on here? You know, inbound, outbound traffic. You know, so you can actually put uh, outbound. So I'm not going to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to allow all traffic because normally outbound doesn't matter. I'm just going to put everything in the outbound. So now outbound is all traffic. And now if you go here and type uh, google.com or bankofamerica.com, it will work now. Okay. See now bankofamerica.com will now work. You see that? You will go to google.com, it will work. Okay. Everything will work. CNN also probably work because I think it has a see, CNN. CNN is still stuck there. That is because of some other problem. All right. So you understand. So now what we're going to do is, can you ping this server now? Can anybody ping this server right now? Look at this inbound rules. No, you cannot ping it, right? Okay. Nobody can ping because we are not allowing ping in this, correct? Yeah. Okay. Let us go and find out a security group or we will create a security group test dash ping dash security group okay security group for testing ping and I'm putting it in class 9 VPC inbound rule I am saying ICMP only and I'm going to say anywhere and I'm going to create outbound is fine okay this is another security group I'm creating and I created a new security group everybody agree on that and now I will go to my instance external web server and I'm going to edit this check security group and I'm going to add our new security group here so this is already there and I'm going to attach our test to ping security group see here a second port security group assign security group so now look here how many security groups are here this is the first one and this is the second one correct now let's look at the inbound rules here so you see here now the rule so look here view inbound rules you can see both the security groups here see the first one here and the second one here first one you are allowing all these and the second one you are allowing ICMP so I told you it's cumulative you can do everything so can you able to ping that server now yeah are you able to ping 54.89.10.212 you will all be able to ping yes so this is what Gashif asked you know what happens so it is cumulative so if you have multiple security groups you cannot block anything in Amazon does not support blocking it so this is clear for everybody I don't think we'll be able to start VPC today but I want this to be very very understand because security and security groups are very important now I'm going to talk one more point before I move in but is this clear for everybody yes 
okay yes. now there is little bit more into this you can even instead of a, a particular thing you can also specify another security group as a as a, as a destination you can say that okay this security group can talk to another security group for example uh, for example it is like this um, I'll, 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 I'm trying to put it I don't know whether I will be able to explain this correctly but let's see uh, let's see I can do that probably so I have a set of servers here okay three servers and these uh, three servers are uh, individually it is security groups are individual you cannot put it all of them but I'm just going to put a security group across them for now okay just imagine that this is for everybody now inbound rule is I'm going to say 80 and 3389 so let's say these are all uh, application servers okay so this is app server 1 this is app server 2 and this is an app server 3 and then there is a database server here two database servers here or three database servers here and each of these ser ser database servers are attached with one security group okay so I'm going to draw another security group here this is called as a database security group which allows port number 1443 okay each one is having individually speaking actually each one is having that security group but I'm just putting that blue thing outside now these app servers want to talk to these three servers DB1 DB2 and DB3 okay so what do you do in the outbound connection here of this server every server you open that port like uh, 1443 and send the IP address, address, of, the IP address of this correct yeah that is right so individual uh, port you open the security group it is just one security group so you open the outbound rule and say uh, outbound is the inbound you know the IP address of this service correct but I'm telling you there is an easy way instead of putting all these IP address so let's say this security groups ID number is SG-001186 that is the security group ID of this you can actually specify in the outbound rule saying that I am allowing 1443 to security group 001186 if I specify that whoever is having that security group they can talk you getting what I'm saying so I'm I can allow that kind of traffic so you can say that you know so this security group let's say this security group is uh, SG 112233 so instead of putting all these IP addresses and making it a mess you could simply say allow traffic from SG 112233 to SG 001186 are you guys getting what I'm saying so I'll show you how to do that you guys practice it okay so you can do that you don't have to go individually to because in a large environment you cannot do all that I know somebody asked me hey how do I do all this you know so this is how you do that so let's let me show you how you can do those things are, are you following me yes okay yeah all right so let's go to this uh, external web server thing I just wanted this web server to uh, and um, let's find out another security group also I don't know a security group let me find out another security group here guys okay so let's say uh, uh, okay, 009 you know this is all the things so I wanted um, is there any database uh, thing I'm just trying to see is there anything okay all right here it is I have something called as app servers here internal app servers 
this is a security group that is attached to all internal app server just imagine so what is that security groups id name sg and also you cannot copy from here okay you never can copy from there but if you want to copy that number you select that and then you have to copy from here okay or or from the description you can copy from here never try to copy from here it will actually give you options to edit it so that is a security group so now you look at what i'm going to say i wanted this external web servers to so all the external web servers are there i want the, them to talk to all the internal app servers so what i'll do is i'll go to the outbound traffic you see what i'm going to do i'll come to the edit traffic i'm just leaving that there add rule custom tcp rules i'm going to say all the app servers uh, web servers can talk to the app server at uh, um, you know port number or custom port rule i'm going to say port number uh, 1444 and then i'm going to say custom and i will type sg what was our uh, security group internal app servers correct do that and save it now tell me you guys tell me what is this means I mean some uh, guys if you're confused please ask me okay because these are very important because you when you go to a company and you do stupid mistakes it will be a big very big outage and you know you may be you it may even compromise your job so you have to be careful with it. If you don't understand, please ask me and I can repeat it. And that's why I'm taking this much time to talk about this just one topic. So here, what are we doing? Can anybody tell me what am I doing here? So the external website is able to talk to the internal app server? Creating new TCP rule. So I basically what I'm doing here is any server, so this is a security group, correct? What is this security group? External web servers, correct? So any server that is having this security group, they can talk to database. Database. internal app servers, not database, some, some, whoever, whichever server is having this security group. It doesn't mean that it is database servers or anything. So whoever is having this security group, they can talk to that guys. You following me? Mm, okay. One question I have, even you have like all, all, and this, so I mean. Yeah, this all, all is, I just put it, I don't want it to remove that, but you should remove that. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. I just I put it, it there, yeah. You don't need to do that. I am just exclusively, if you want only exclusively, then you should do this. This is what okay. you should do. I got it. This is what it is. So right now, these, the servers, so look at this now. This that was my next question, actually. Yeah, hold on. So this is a security group. Okay, let's look at this. External web server. That is the security group's name. External web servers. This this security group is attached to which server? This server, correct? External web server. Security group is attached to this server. Everybody following me that? Yes. So this server can now talk to whom? Can it go to internet? No, it can talk to internal app server. It can only talk to, not to internal app servers, it can talk to the servers who have that security group. Not a server, you know, you can attach a security group to hundreds of servers. So whichever server is having that internal web server security group, they'll be able to talk. Yeah, we have to be very careful when we create this kind of rule, right? You have to be careful. You have to be careful. So, let me let me draw this one more time to show you guys, okay? I, I think I will put it in a simple way. Now you will understand. So, we have a security group called external web servers, okay? And we have another security group called internal app service. These are two security groups, okay? Let's say SG. SG. 
okay and this SG's number is 112233 I'm just giving a security group ID and this security group's ID is 778899 can you see this I unfortunately selected a black, bad color can you see the blue color yes okay so this is one security group this is another security group we are now talking about internal rules and out every security group will have an in inbound rule and an outbound rule correct yes yes or no every security group will have an inbound rule and an outbound rule correct right yes okay so i'm going to put the inbound rule here inbound rule i'm going to say port 80 outbound rule I'm going to say port 1443 I'm just putting a port number okay don't take this two and this is actually a inbound ball 82 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 slash 0 that means what can anybody tell me what is this means Slash. Anybody can access it anybody, from anybody, anybody, no. anybody can access that port using that. Here I am saying outbound is 1443 to SG 112233. What does that mean? That means this whoever is having this security group, this is not a server, this is a security group. Whoever is having this security group, that servers can talk to whom? Any servers having the uh, security group in okay. Anybody. So now we will see here in this security group, I have an inbound rule that says 1443 allowing SG, what is it? 77. Eight eight nine nine, and outbound. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to say all traffic. Yeah. So what is this means? These guys can talk to this guy now. Correct? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are you all following me? Okay, yeah. now I have three servers here, one, two, three, or four servers here. Each of these four servers having this external security group. I'm not putting it full like this, I'm putting it like this. Each of these servers have this security group. And then I have the database servers here. Two database servers or, or app servers. And they have their own security groups. But now my question is, can these servers talk to this server or not? At port yes. number port number one four four three. Here in these servers one four four three is open. How do you know it is open? Because the inbound it says one four four. But who can talk to one four four three? Can zero dot zero talk? Can can some server talk? No. Please. Whoever is having this security group can talk. Correct? Right. So that means all these guys can talk, correct? Yes all these guys can talk to that server because my inbound rule says all these guys who are having that security group can talk to 1443 and that is also possible because in the outbound I have said okay you guys can only talk to that guy see I am exclusively controlling my traffic you understand what I'm saying 
Okay, so now, I mean, I think I gave you some idea. This is all I can do. This is the best I can do. I don't think anybody go this level to explain you. But what is the best thing to learn this is, you create your own groups and play around with it. Believe me, guys, you know, I'm not teaching. I have done this so many times, and I have seen complicated issues, and I have done stupid mistakes also. This So you have to be, just like somebody said earlier, you have to be very careful with it because... You, if you may have a database server in your company, in your Amazon environment, and if you put a, a wrong security group there, what happens? It will be probably exposed to the outside world, correct? Then somebody can access it, so you have to be very careful with that. That is why Amazon admins and especially cloud admins are very demanding nowadays. They want people who know these things clearly. Simply, you know, if you look for a proxy and get into a job and you do some stupid thing, it's a problem because you have to be very careful. You need to have a good understanding of these things. And they wanted people who know security. Security groups will be, uh, when you go for interviews, they can left and right ask you questions from that. You know, port numbers, that, this, you know, they can screw you with that. If you don't know that, you will be in trouble. So that is why I'm telling you it's very, very important. Security group, VPC, there are so many questions they can ask. So create some test servers, you know, create app servers, web servers, dev servers, you know, and then you play around. So you can do that. Uh, you don't have to go and individually specify. So in that example that I showed, did I specify any IP address? You remember? No. Did no, I specify did any IP address? No, I didn't specify any IP address. I just specified two sub security groups and I was able to do everything, right? Otherwise, I could have gone individually to each server and do that also. 1443 from server 1, server 2, server 3, and then in the each server I can say, okay, inbound from this server, this server, all that. In that server, remember, in the app server here, in that app server's inbound thing, I can say IP address from here, IP address from this, IP address from here, IP address from here. I could have specified four rules, allowing 1443, allowing 1443, 1443. 1443. I could have done that. But instead of that, I just did all these things into one security group. I just, okay, you come, come here. You following what I'm saying? So you can do that, okay? Guys, you following me? I'm keeping quiet. That's why I'm just keep on asking. No, I, hope you, I think everybody is clear, yeah. right? I have one question. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Sri. Uh, Deepu, will it cost anything if you create any, uh, if you create a security group? Very good question. That is a good question. Is there any cost associated with creating security groups? What do you guys think? Anybody has an answer? What is the cost price for security groups? So there is price for volumes, there is price for IP addresses, everything. But what about security groups? Yes, I think so. Security groups is free. Uh, there is no money. You can create as much as security groups you want and there is no cost for it. So create as much as you want attached to your instances. It is free. Okay? You can create whatever you want. So it doesn't matter. No cost for security groups. Okay? So try it out, clean it out. If you don't want all these things, you know, I would say go ahead and delete all these things and create that. Everybody is clear? So 1040, I just want to tell you one more very, very important thing. So is this clear? Then only I can tell my next word. Otherwise, it will be a problem. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, very much clear. Okay, at least a couple of people are clear. Yes. And now I'm going to tell you, where do we apply a security group? So we VPC. A, no, no. We, where do you applying a security group? Instance. To a server, right? To an up instance, correct? To an instance. This is how you, this is an instance A and you, this is how you apply. This is what I said, right? Yes or no? Yes. So you apply security groups uh, Mutu, I cannot hear you, okay? Uh, let me see, I have muted you or not. 
Sunu, I can. I was muted. You see, the thing is, guys, you know, if you come late, Amutu, you are also muted. Okay, if you guys come late, I won't be able to go. This is a pretty big class. I cannot go to everywhere. So if you can come by 9, 5, then I will be able to unmute you. If you come later part, then I cannot focus on that. I have to focus on this. And I have to focus at the chat. Actually, I think I do a pretty good job looking at the chat at least. You know, there are some guys who once they start teaching, they don't even look at the chat. Uh, but I, at least here, I think I am kind of always looking at I have two screens, so I always look at the chat. But if you come at 9, 10, 9, 15, and then you, uh, you know, Said them, I am sorry. Okay, so try to come at you know. You see that you know all these classes. You just imagine, I am very very busy person, very busy person, and believe me, it's crazy busy. I I get only five hours sleep, but I so far I think you all know that I was here every day at nine o'clock. Correct, at least two minutes earlier than nine. But I'm not saying I have. There are cases where I got delayed a little bit, but please try to make sure you be here five minutes early. That is good. Don't everybody oh nine o'clock is my class, so I'll join at nine o'clock. Don't do that. If it is nine o'clock, try to make it eight fifty-five so that we can start on time and do things and then these problems won't happen. Mutu, I'm not pointing at you, but I'm just telling in general for everybody so that you know we'll be able to do it. You know, I try to do all my things uh, and finish it off and I try to come here and sit at least by eight fifty, eight fifty five. That's what I do, but certain days I cannot, but See if you can make it by 9. Don't make it a habit of joining the class at 9. When you try to do at 9, then it will end up in 9, 5, 9, 10. Rather say, okay, I want to be there at 9, 8, 55. So, Mutu, I can hear you now. You are, you are muted. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, let me just finish. It's time is running out. So, this is instance. So, I told you, you have an instance you can put there. Eh? security group across that instant isn't it but I am now telling you that you normally don't put security groups around an instance security groups are not attached to an instance actually speaking in reality it is not really attached to an instance it is attached to the network card of your server. The security groups are actually attached to the network card because the network card is the one that allows your inbound and outbound traffic, isn't it? Yes or no? So when you apply, when you say I'm yes. putting a security group on an instance, it is actually speaking you are putting that security group on the network card. Okay. But you can always say, I'm putting a security group across that instance. That's a normal colloquial language. But you being a real uh, Amazon administrator, I would, uh, I would probably expect you to say, okay, security groups are attached to network card. Because when you get on to the next level of troubleshooting, you need to understand that. And I'm going to show you actually what has happened on our external server 001. So if you look at external server 001, and if you really look at the servers, you can see that security group attached. It is showing here ex security group is all there. But if you come here, you can see the Ethernet network card, correct? You see that? This is the network card of that server, correct? Only one network card. You click on that network card, and you see here the security group attached to that. You see that? And I'm going to the real network card. This is the actual network card. I'm going to the network card. Now I am on the networking interface. Look at here. This is the network interface. And you can see the security groups, the same security groups here. Why the heck? You know, did I put the security group onto this network card? See here? This is the security group that we put, correct? Look here. Isn't it? That is the security group we put, right? We were telling all this time, I was telling you that I was putting it on that instance. I was putting it on that instance. But really, did I put it on the instance? No. Actually not. I was putting it actually at the networking level. Now, let me go here and 
change the security group here okay, or, or attaching I cannot remove it from here but I am going to attach a new security group here just uh, see this I cannot see whether I can do it okay uh, I'm going to attach just something to show you Linux firewall I'm just attaching a security group to that network card save it so now you tell me see I changed everything so it's gone I just put the net I changed everything and I put only one network card here okay so I put in that network card I changed the firewall uh, sorry uh, the security group now let's go back to our instance and look at it what happens you see that it changed change so all I'm telling you is when you are applying a security group though we say we are I see it is actually doing at the networking level you see that when you change security group or you do all that things you're actually doing that at the network card level okay Keep that in mind in the back of your mind because when you're doing some troubleshooting and things like that, it is very, very important. So, I can make it a little more complicated. Uh, not complicated, you know, interesting topic. I have a server that has two network cards. Can I put a set of security groups here and another set of security groups here? Is this possible? I think it should be. It is possible, okay. So, yes. but the problem is <coughs> here in through, so let's say this is network card number one and this is network card number two. In network card number one, I am only allowing port 80. In network card two, I am only allowing port 22 and port 443 so in effect in effect this server can be accessed from all these three ports correct but whoever is coming through this network card this IP address they can only access this whoever is coming through this network card can only access that even though when you look at the server this is where the troubleshooting comes when somebody look oh this server is having all these for cumulative you know Deepu said yeah you know you this cumulative so you should be able to access 80 you should be able to access 22 you should be able to access 443 but when you are trying to do it you are not able to do 80 what is the problem you think 80 is allowed but you are not able to access 80 from there what is the problem because you are coming through network card 2 in network card 2 is port 80 allowed No. So these are yeah, these are complicated. I mean, little advanced, but you know, not advanced. You know, very rarely, very rarely only I see people putting multiple network cards. That is only allowed on checkpoint firewalls and things like that. Yes, when you want to do those kind of advanced networking securities and all in Amazon, you have to do. But when you build Windows servers or application servers or database servers or load balancers and all, it is only going to be having one IP address okay you will not have multiple IP addresses but when you have multi not multiple IP addresses multiple network cards when you have multiple network cards uh, you can control the traffic the way I showed you now does that make sense okay. all right so now tomorrow we'll learn some more things so uh, VPC I, I'm going to t I'm going to stop it now here a VPC VPC is your boundary your network your company's servers are all going to be in this VPC this VPC has some firewalls or I would say some access control list who can access these VPCs inside the VPCs you have multiple subnets network subnets each subnet 
as an access control list. That means who can access the subnets are controlled by the access control list. Inside the subnet is where you create your little VMs. And the VM is having access control list in the form of what? We have group. access control list in the form of what? Security group. Security group. So now you look at it. Your VM is here. The VM is circulated by a security group. The VM is sitting inside a subnet. The subnet is having a protection that is access control list. Where is the subnet is sitting? It is sitting inside a VPC. So if somebody wants to hack into the server, they have to first break this. Then they have to break this. Then they have to break this to get into this. And now you can have a Windows firewall inside also. Isn't it great? Now this is all, you know, I learned from myself. Nobody taught. There is no book or anything, guys. But this is the way you need to look at it. You see how secure it is? This is the way you need to understand networking. So this is interesting. We, we're going to get into VPC. When we learn VPC, you will understand this more. So this is why I'm telling Amazon's networking and securities are all, you know, it's not just like that. Okay, you are thinking, oh, my VM is protected. But you see the things? So you can have a multiple layer of protections. If you really want to, you can do that. But in reality, does people do that? No. Does companies do that? No, there is no need. You normally allow traffic from here to here to here. The actual security is done always at the instance level, at the network card level. This is where the real permissions, most of the time the traffics are allowed here. But again, you, you might have heard about the DDoS attacks and all, right? DDoS, heard about DDoS attacks and things like that, you know? hackers can do these kind of things when those kind of attacks by big hackers you know if the Russian hackers are trying to get into you know uh, Pentagon's VPC or something that kind of uh, multi-layer DDoS attacks and all comes up Amazon can figure out and they will block it right here at the perimeter level this is called as a perimeter of your network they block it right here now this VPC is sitting where this VPC is sitting where in a region, right? No, not in data center, you know, in a region because a VPC can span multiple regions, multiple availability zones. I mentioned earlier that, correct? So, a region itself has some protection. Amazon will have some protection at the region level also. DDoS attacks and all are blocked here itself. So, you will not even see, thing, you know, so, um, um, you know, you heard about penetration testing. Have you heard about pen testing? Some, some, you know, if you are in companies and all, you might have heard about pen testing, right? Have you heard about that? Yeah. What is pen testing? I think it is just to trace, like, you know, the IPs and all those, like. Yeah. Um, pen testing you know. is how you make, you know, when before your company put your uh, company's website into public and all, they wanted to test and make sure, you know, it cannot be hacked and also there are different companies that do pen testing. Companies like AT&T, companies like Verizon, uh, you know, Terramark, there are different companies that can do pen testing. They do different type of hacking tools to attack your server. And then they will tell you, okay, this is having a vulnerability, there is a problem, I can get into it, block that. So that is how your developers will develop the codes in order to protect your servers. self attack okay, Mahesh is saying, correct, self-attacking the servers to test it, right? You are attacking your own servers to see, is there any loopholes, correct? Now, who is doing that? Typically, you assign this to, no, you don't want your own team to, you know, you're de you know Mahesh is a developer and Mahesh is doing the uh, uh, pen testing. It doesn't make any sense, right? Because Mahesh said, to yeah, so you normally give that to a third party. You don't do it yeah. in your own company. Normally, you give it to third party companies and they come and attack it. And they say, okay, I can attack this, this, this. So when you have a VPC and you have your application servers within the VPC and you want to do a pen testing, the pen testing won't work because Amazon will block that at the outside layer.
but you can do pen testing you by calling amazon you have to talk to amazon security and say hey you know what this company in this day at from this particular ip address they are going to test it then amazon will allow that guy to or that company to allow so you specify the verizon's ip address okay 172.85.88 is going to test it then they will allow for that otherwise verizon cannot test it cool <clears throat> I, I think uh, I'm, I'm going little too much here, but I think these are uh, some general tips I was giving you guys. You know, these are useful things. When you when you when you are in company and you are in discussions and all, you can you can think all these things. You know, if you don't know these things, that's a problem. That is, this is these things that I mentioned: uh, double network card, uh, the the layers above every EPC subnet and all. That is way outside the scope of the class. From a exam perspective, also, I don't think you will get those questions. A pen testing blocking you know but I just uh, mentioned because it came to my mind so we'll stop here guys I think uh, security group you know I think probably this is the first time I did a two-hour security group class <laughs> uh, but but I hope you guys at least uh, understand what I said even though I spent two hours so thanks